Hello everyone, welcome to Creative Civil Engineering Coach. In this video, I will be discussing about PGCET Civil Engineering Question Paper of the Year 2017. Now let's begin with the part 1 questions. Question number 1. Strain energy of a member is? Strain energy is a function of stress and strains. Option B is the right answer. Question number 2. For a linear system, type of the displacement function for strain energy is the displacement function for a linear system is linear option a is the right answer three the minimum number of members required to form a simple truss is a simple truss is a planar truss which begin with a triangular element and can be expanded by adding two members and a joint so in the following figure you can observe the form of a simple truss where the number of members and the joints are related by the following equation m is equal to 2j minus 3 so the minimum number of members required to form a simple truss is 3 option b is the right answer question number 4 for a linear elastic system minimization of potential energy yields in a linear elastic system the minimization of potential energy yields with the compatibility conditions compatibility conditions are mathematical conditions so that they determine whether a particular deformation leave the body in a compatible state so option a is the right answer compatibility conditions question number five the xy segment in a curved member with a straight vertical leg carrying load w at a point z is subjected to so in the following figure you can observe they are not mentioned the point z but let's assume the point z here and try to solve the question here in the vertical member xy the load passes through this axis and for this vertical member the eccentricity and bending moment will be zero so this vertical member carry axial forces only so option b is the right answer question number six the color of the granite is granite is an example of extrusive igneous rocks and these type of the rocks are formed when the molten material called magma within the crust reaches the earth's surface in the form of lava and cools down so granite appears in gray green and brown color all these options are correct so the right answer is option d question number seven the defect caused due to over maturity and un unventilated storage of wood during its transit is called this type of the defect in the wood is called foxiness option c is the right answer it may appear in red or yellow in color not effects are called dark colored stains on the surface of the wood after conversion Rain galls are curved swellings of the trees where the branch of the trees are improperly removed or fell down. Heart shakes are nothing but the cracks which separate the wood fibers partly or completely. In the following figure you can observe the different types of the defects of wood. Question number 8. The number of independent displacement components at each joint of a rigid jointed space frame is. In case of a rigid jointed space frame, every member carries 6 unknown internal forces, 3 forces in the x, y and z direction and the three movements in x y z directions so totally six independent displacement components occurs at each joint of a rigid joint space frame and the degree of static independency is calculated by 6m plus r minus 6j question number nine the rigid jointed space frame shown in the figure is for this type of the frame we have to check whether the structure is statically determinate or not by the formula 3m plus r minus 3j where m is the number of the members of the rigid jointed frame so there are two members 3 into 2 plus r r is the number of reactions 3 reactions and number of the joints is 3 so 3 into 3 so degree of static indeterminacy will be 6 plus 3 minus 9 which is equal to 0 so if the degree of static indeterminacy is 0 so the structure is statically stable and determinate option b is the right answer question number 10 the ratio of maximum shear stress to average shear stress for a rectangular section is the maximum shear stress for a rectangular section is given by the formula 3 by 2 times of average shear stress so the ratio of Maximum shear stress to average shear stress is 3 by 2 which is equal to 1.5. So the right answer is option B. Question number 11. 
forces in the legs of the tripod stand is an example for in the following figure you can observe the tripod stand with the three legs a b c and these are the corresponding forces in the three legs of the tripod stand f1 f2 f3 all these forces pass through the same point but does not in the same plane so these type of the forces represents non coplanar concurrent forces option b is the right answer question number 12 impact test enables one to estimate the property of impact test is defined as the energy absorbed by the material during fracture and this energy absorbed by a material is the measure of toughness so so impact test enables the property of toughness option b is the right answer question number 13 proof resilience is the maximum energy stored at the maximum energy will be stored at elastic limit option b is the right answer question number 14 the possible location of shear center of the channel section shown in the figure is shear center is defined as the point through which the load must be applied to produce zero twisting moment on the section if the load passes through the shear center there will be only bending stress in the cross section and no twisting moment in the following figure you can observe the two conditions of shear center condition number 1 if the beam has two axes of symmetry then the shear center will lie at their point of intersection condition number 2 for a section having one axis of symmetry the shear center lies on the axis of symmetry so for the given channel section r cannot be a shear center option d is eliminated now q and s cannot be a shear center because because of they cause external loading in twisting moment either in the clockwise or anti clockwise direction so option b and c are also eliminated so the remaining is only p the possible location of shear center is at p option a is the right answer question number 15 a reinforced concrete structure has to be constructed along a sea coast the minimum grade of concrete to be used as per is 456 2000 is when a reinforced concrete structure has to be constructed along a sea coast according to is 456 2000 codal provisions from the table 3 it undergoes a very severe exposure condition so for a severe exposure condition from the table 5 the minimum grade of concrete recommended is m30 grade so option d is the right answer question number 16 the poisson ratio is defined as poisson ratio is uh, denoted by a symbol mu and it is defined as the ratio of lateral strain to la longitudinal strain so option b is the right answer lateral strain by axial strain question number 17 for an isotropic relation between young's modulus e shear, shear modulus g and poisson ratio mu is given by we know that from the elastic constant relation e is equal to 2g into 1 plus mu and e is equal to 3k into 1 minus 2 mu so by rearranging this formula g is equal to e divided by 2 into 1 plus mu So option A is the right answer. Question number 18. The main principle of surveying is to work from the main principle of surveying is to work from old to part because in working from old to part the error will localize and prevent the accumulation of error while working from part to whole. So option B is the right answer. Question number 19. The line normal to the plumb line is known as the line normal to the plumb line is known as level line. Level line is a line parallel to the mean spherical surface of the earth or a line lying on a level surface so the right answer is option b level line question number 20 close contours of decreasing values towards their center represents when the close contour profile with the decreasing value inwards represents pond or depression option b is the right answer in the following figure you can observe the contour profile with the decreasing value inwards question number 21 planimeter is used for measuring planimeter is also known as plateau meter it is a table top instrument for measuring areas usually the areas of irregular regions on a map or a photograph in the following figure you can observe the instrument planimeter so planimeter is basically used to measure areas option a is the right answer question number 22 the advantage of providing super elevation on the roads is 
Super elevation is the transfer slope provided to counteract the effect of centrifugal forces and to reduce the tendency of the vehicle to overturn and to skid laterally outwards by raising the pavement outer edge with respect to inner edge. In the following figure, you can observe how the super elevation is provided on the highways. So, by providing a super elevation on the roads, it increases the speed of the vehicle, it increases the volume of the traffic and reduces the maintenance maintenance cost of the roads. So all these options are correct. So the right answer will be option D. All of the above. Question number 23. Staggered rail joints are generally provided on. Staggered rail joints are normally preferred on curved tracks because they hinder the centrifugal forces that pushes the track outwards. In the following figure, you can observe the staggered rail joints. So the right answer is option A. Question number 24. Surf zone is. Surf zone is the swell of a sea breaking on the shore of reefs. It is a relatively a narrow strip of a body of water that borders the land and which contains the waves that are breaking due to the shallow water depth. So the right answer is option C. Surf zone is the swell of the sea breaking on the shore or reefs. Option C is the right answer. Question number 25. If F is the fetch, the straight straight line distance of open water available in the kilometers, the height of the wave in meters is. Fetch means the water which comes and go back reverse to ocean due to waves. So the height of the wave is calculated as 0.34 times of square root of F. So option D is the right answer 0.34 times of root F. Question number 26. The Kuchling formula to determine the rate of fire demand is. In the following figure you can observe the different formulas to determine the rate of fire demand. According to Kuchling formula, the discharge is equal to 318 root P, where P is the population in thousands. So option B is the right answer. In Question number 27. Air binding may occur in. Air binding is a phenomenon of clogging the filter due to the resistance offered by a medium particle along with impurities exceeding the static head of water in rapid sand filter. So air binding will occur in filters. Option D is the right answer. Question number 28. Composting and lagooning are the methods of composting and lagooning are the methods of sludge disposal. Option B is the right answer. Because composting is the process involving both the separation and bacterial conversion of organic solid weights. While the lagooning is the method in which a raw sludge is disposed of without digestion by a large shallow open pond called lagoons. So the right answer is option B. Question number 29. The effective size of sand particles used in slow sand filter is. In a slow sand filter, the effective size of the sand used is 0.25 to 0.35 mm. Option A is the right answer. Question number 30. If pan evaporation is denoted by EP and actual evaporation is denoted by E, then the relation between pan evaporation and actual evaporation is. Actual evaporation is greater than pan evaporation. So option B is the right answer and the pan coefficient is the ratio of actual evaporation by pan evaporation. Question number 31. In order to prepare a 2 hour unit hydrograph from a 6 hour unit hydrograph, which of the following method will be applied? To obtain a unit hydrograph of a shorter duration from a longer duration and vice versa, the best method of hydrograph is S-curve method. So this S-curve method represents the maximum rate at which an effective rainfall intensity of 1 cm per hour in d hours duration can draw out from a catchment area of a km square. So option b is the right answer. Question number 32. The amount of water stored in a river channel without any artificial storage is called. The amount of the water stored in a river channel without any artificial storage in its valley up to its bank before constructing a reservoir is called valley storage. This type of the storage depends upon cross section of the river. So option C is the right answer. Question number 33. The ratio of 5 day BOD to its ultimate BOD is about. We know that 5 day BOD is approximately 68% of the ultimate BOD. So the ratio of 5 day BOD to its ultimate BOD is equal to 2 by 3 which is equal to 68%. So option B is the right answer. Question number 34. The effect of increasing diameter of the sewer on the self-cleansing velocity is. Self-cleansing velocity is given by the formula Vs is equal to 8k g d into g minus 1 divided by d square where k is the constant depending on the type of the solid present in the sewage 
g is the acceleration due to gravity d is the dia of the particle g is the specific gravity of the particle and f is the friction factor so if we increase the diameter of the particle then the self cleansing velocity also increases so in the question it is clearly mentioned about increasing the dia of the sieve and not the dia of the particle so by increasing the diameter of the sieve it does not affect anything so nil will be the correct answer option d is the right answer question number 35 specific weight of the liquid is specific weight of the liquid does not remain constant at every places option b is the right answer question number 36 fluid changes the volume under external pressure due to liquids are generally incompressible where the gases are highly compressible fluid changes the volume under the external pressure due to compressibility of the fluid so option c is the right answer compressibility question number 37 in an open tube free surface of the mercury remains always downwards so this effect happens due to surface tension forces which works on the liquid surface in open tubes the plane of all the liquid segments move downwards option c is the right answer question number 38 the unit of viscosity is viscosity is the measure of resistance to flow which arises due to internal friction between layers of the fluid and the unit of viscosity is poise or newton second per meter square option b is the right answer question number 39 a floating body attains stable equilibrium if its meta center height is when the meta center height is greater than 0 or it is above the center of gravity the floating body attains a stable equilibrium so when the meta center height is above the centroid it attains stable equilibrium option a is the right answer question number 40 the total head of liquid particles may possess the total head of the liquid is equal to potential head plus kinetic head plus pressure head and it is given by the following formula so the right answer is option d potential head kinetic head and pressure head question number 41 equation of continuity of flow is based on the principle of conservation of it is based on the principle of conservation of mass option a is the right answer it is given by the relation rho1 v1 a1 is equal to rho2 v2 a2 so continuity equation represents the product of cross section area of the pipe and fluid speed at any point along the pipe is constant question number 42 The instrument used for measuring the velocity of the flow is known as instrument used to measure the velocity of the flow is pitot tube option c is the right answer and it is given by the formula v is equal to square root of 2gh it is a device used for measuring the velocity of the flow at any point in a pipe or channel section question number 43 for the most economical rectangular channel section the hydraulic mean depth is equal to The most economical rectangular channel section is the one in which wetted perimeter for a given channel section is minimum. So for a rectangular channel section depth is equal to half times of the width of the flow. So option B is the right answer. Half times the width of the flow. It should be width of the flow. Question number 44. Soils that have been transported by wind. When the soils are transported by wind action, such type of the deposits are called airline deposits. Option C is the right answer. This type of the deposits have uniformly greater particles with higher void ratio and permeability and these types of the soils have high compressibility and high density so the right answer is yearly deposit option c is the right answer in the following table you can observe the different types of the soil deposit with the different means of transportation question number 45 the ratio of total volume of the soil to the total volume of the soil is defined as porosity so option a is the right answer question number 46 the correct order of capillary rise in increasing order in different types of the soil is as there is a increase in fineness of the soil capillary rise also increases which means that fine grain soil has more capillary rise as compared to coarse grain soil so the correct order of capillary rise is fine sand greater than silt silt is greater than clay and clay is greater than colloids so option d is the right answer question number 47 negative skin friction in soil is considered when the pile is constructed through a the negative skin friction reduces the bearing capacity of the pile because the depth or portion of the pile up to which a negative skin friction acts becomes the part of applied load of on the pile so when the pile is constructed through a filler material the negative skin friction in the soil is considered option a is the right answer Question number 48 the collapsible soil is associated with soils in which there is a decrease in volume on the addition of water are called collapsible soils example are losses 
Losses is a silt deposit made by wind. These deposits have low density and high compressibility and bearing capacity of such soil is very low. So the right answer is option C. Question number 49. The two criteria for the determination of allowable bearing capacity of a foundation are Shear failure and settlement. Option D is the right answer. These two criteria are independent to each other and must be satisfied separately. Foundation must be safe against shear failure or soil rupture and the settlement of the foundation must be within the permissible limits. So the right answer is option D. Question number 50. Soils are arranged in face to face orientation. This type of the soil structure is called dispersed structures. Option A is the right answer. In the following figure you can observe the soil structure with the face to face orientation arrangement. So this completes the part 1 questions of this question paper. Now let's begin with the part 2 questions. Question number 51. For the beam shown in the figure, the value of the support movement in kilo newton meter is. In this figure you can observe there is a fixed beam with a central concentrated load of 20 kilo newton meter at the center of the beam. So here you can observe by the symmetry we can consider it into two parts of the beam separately with half of the load at the joint C. Carry over movement will be 5 kilo newton meter. Option A is the right answer 5 kilo newton meter. Question number 52. Ultimate collapse load P in terms of plastic movement MP by kinematic approach for a proper cantilever P acting at a mid span is. So deflection is equal to L by 2 into theta. According to principle of virtual work external work done internal work done minus 3 mp into theta so the sum of internal work done and external work done is equal to 0 the value of p is equal to 6 mp theta by l option c is the right answer Question number 53. For the beam subjected to uniformly distributed movement m kilo newton per meter unit length, bending movement at the mid span is. The bending movement will be 0 at the mid span. Option A is the right answer. Question number 54. A rigid bar gh of a length l is supported by hinge and a spring stiffness k as shown in the figure. Buckling load per length for the bar will be. Buckling load multiplied by deflection is equal to force into length of the bar where force is stiffness into deflection multiplied by length so buckling load is equal to k delta l divided by delta therefore buckling load will be k into l so the right answer is option d one times of stiffness into length of the bar Question number 55. A concrete beam of rectangular cross section is stressed by 200 mm by 400 mm and it is stressed by a force of 400 kN with an eccentricity of 100 mm. The maximum compressive stress in the concrete is. So we have to determine the maximum compressive stress of concrete which is given by the following formula where I is the moment of inertia of a rectangular cross section that is BD cube by 12. On solving this the maximum compressive stress in the concrete will be 12.5 Newton per mm square. Option A is the right answer. Question number 56. A ball of weight W is supported on smooth planes as shown in the figure. The free body diagram of the ball is. When the ball is supported on a smooth planes, the reactions will be perpendicular to the planes. So, its free body diagram will be like this. The right answer will be option A. Question number 57. If a ladder is not in equilibrium against a smooth vertical wall, then it can be made in equilibrium by Ladder will slip because of gravitational force acting on it downward direction. Change in length will have no effect in the force due to gravity. But when the angle of inclination is increased, it reduces the force due to gravity. So by increasing the area of the ladder, the ladder can be put in equilibrium. Option C. Question number 58. A steel column pinned at both ends has a buckling load of 200 kN. If the column is restrained against the lateral movement at its mid height, then the buckling load is. When the column is pinned at both ends, effective length is length of the column. So the buckling load will be pi square ei by l square. But when the column is restrained against a lateral movement at its mid height, effective length will be half of the length of the column. 
so the corresponding buckling load will be pi square ei by l by 2 square therefore buckling load when the column is restrained is equal to buckling load when the column is pinned at both ends multiplied by 4 times so 200 into 4 is equal to 800 kilo newton option d is the right answer question number 59 the stepper cantilever is subjected to movements m as shown in the figure the vertical deflection at the free end is so let's consider this as point a b and c so we have to find the deflection at point c deflection at the free point is ml square by 8 ei option a is the right answer question number 60 rl of the benchmark is 100 meter the back side is 1.215 meter and the fore side is 1.870 meter the rl of the forward station is so the rl of forward station is 100 meter plus back side 1.215 meter minus fore side 1.870 meter so rl of the forward station is equal to 99.345 meter option a is the right answer question number 61 in a broad gauge railway track a specified ruling gradient of 1 in 250 the horizontal curve of 3 degree on a gradient of 1 in 250 will have a permissional gradient of so we have to provide a grade compensation for the ruling gradient of 1 in 250 grade compensation of a broad gauge railway track is equal to 0 0.0 percent per degree of the curve so 0 0.04 percent of 3 degree horizontal curve which is equal to 0.12 percent ruling gradient is equal to 0.4 percent allowable gradient is equal to ruling gradient minus grade compensation so allowable gradient will be 0.28 percent which is equal to 1 in 357 so the right answer is option a question number 62 the main plate of a transit is divided into 1080 equal divisions 60 divisions of the vernier coincides with the 59 divisions of the main plate the transit can read angles accurate up to so we have to find the least count of a theodolite which is equal to 360 degree divided by number of divisions 1080 divided by number of divisions of vernier scale 60 multiplied by 360 seconds so least count is equal to 20 seconds option a is the right answer question number 63 the radius of horizontal curve is 100 meter the design speed of the vehicle is 50 km per hour and the design coefficient of lateral friction is 0.15 what would be the rate of super elevation if the full lateral friction is considered so we have to determine the rate of super elevation the rate of super elevation is 1 in 21.34 option a is the right answer question number 64 chlorine usage in the treatment of 20,000 cumis per day is 8 kg per day the residual chlorine after 10 minute contact is 20 milligram per liter the chlorine dosage in milligram per liter will be so we have to determine the chlorine dosage given for the treatment of water Chlorine dosage is the ratio of amount of chlorine consumed per day that is 8 into 10 to the power of 6 milligram per day divided by water treated per day. Water treated is 20,000 cubic per day. If you convert it into liters per day, it is 20 into 10 to the power of 6. So chlorine dosage would be 0.4 milligram per liter. So the right answer is option A, 0.4 milligram per liter. Question number 65. The volume of the sedimentation tank is 10 meter by 50 meter by 1.5 meter deep. Flow rate would be 500 meter per day. The retention time of the sedimentation tank would be. It is calculated by the ratio of volume of the sedimentation tank divided by flow rate. Retention time would be 1.5 hours. The correct answer is not given in the following option. So it was declared as a grace marks for this question. Question number 66. If self purification constant of a large stream flowing with a low velocity is 2, its reoxygenation coefficient is 0.2, then its deoxygenation coefficient will be. We know that the self purification constant k is the ratio of reoxygenation coefficient divided by deoxygenation coefficient. They have given the value of self purification constant as 2 and reoxygenation coefficient as 0.2. So, the deoxygenation coefficient kd is equal to 0 0.2 divided by 2 which is equal to 0 0.1 option b is the right answer question number 67 2 million liters of water per day is passing through the sedimentation tank which is 6 meter wide 15 meter long and having a water depth of 3 meter 
detention time for the tank will be capacity of the tank is 15 meter length 6 meter wide and 3 meter deep which is equal to 270 meter cube and discharge of the sedimentation tank is 2 million liter per day which is equal to 2 into 10 to the power of 6 liter per day so it is calculated in hours it will be 83.33 liters per hour so detention time t is equal to capacity of the tank 270 meter cube divided by discharge of the tank 83.33 liters per hour option a is the right answer 68 two small orifices a and b of a diameter 1 cm and 2 cm respectively are placed on the sides of the tank at a depth h1 and h2 below the open liquid surface if the discharge through a and b are equal then the ratio of h1 and h2 assuming equal coefficient discharge will be discharge between the orifice a and b is constant and the coefficient of discharge between the two orifices is equal for orifice meter discharge is given by area into coefficient of discharge into square root of 2gh therefore the ratio of discharge between the two orifices a and b is equal to area multiplied by square root of h1 a2 square root of h2 which is equal to area of the first orifice a of 1 centimeter dia so pi 1 square by 4 into h1 square root of h1 divided by area of the second orifice with the 2 centimeter dia since the discharge is constant the ratio of discharge a and b orifice is 1 so square root of h1 by h2 is equal to 4 by 1 therefore h1 by h2 is equal to 16 by 1 option a is the right answer Question number 69. A model of reservoir is emptied in 10 minutes. If the model scale is 1 is to 25, then the time taken by the prototype to empty itself would be. The ratio of model time and the prototype time is square root of model scale that is 1 is to 25. So model time is equal to square root of 1 by 25 into prototype time. Model time is 10 minutes. So scale model is 1 is to 25 therefore time taken by the prototype is 50 minute option b is the right answer question number 70 if the capillary rise of water in 1 mm diameter tube is 3 cm the height of the capillary rise of water in 0.2 mm diameter tube in centimeter would be the capillary rise of the water in capillary tube is given by the formula h is equal to 4t cos theta divided by rho g d where t is the surface tension theta is the contact angle rho is the density of the liquid g is the acceleration due to gravity and d is the diameter of the capillary tube so height of the capillary rise is inversely proportional to the diameter of the capillary tube so h1 by h2 is equal to d2 by d1 h1 is 3 centimeter h2 is we have to find d2 is 0.2 mm and d1 is 1 mm therefore h2 is equal to 3 into 1 divided by 0.2 which is equal to 15 centimeter so option c is the right answer Question number 71 trapezoidal channel with a base width 6 meter side slope of 2 is to 1 convey water of 16 meter cube per second with a depth of the flow 1.5 meter fraud number would be fraud number is the ratio of viscous force by gravitational force so let's first draw a trapezoidal channel section with a base width 6 meter having a side slope of 2 is to 1 on both the sides top width is equal to 6 meter plus 1 into 1.5 into 1.5 which is equal to 12 meter area of the trapezoidal channel section is half of 12 plus 6 into 1.5 which is equal to 13.5 meter square hydraulic mean depth is given by area by top width so area is 13.5 top width 
top width is 12 meter now we have to find the fraud number that is q by a into square root of g into a by t which is equal to 0.3569 which is less than 1 if the fraud number is less than 1 it is a subcritical type of flow so when option c is the right answer Question number 72. An undisturbed soil sample has plastic limit of 25%, natural moisture content of 40%, and a liquidity index of 50%. Then its liquid unit is. You know that liquidity index is given by the formula liquid limit minus natural moisture content divided by liquid limit minus plastic limit. For liquid limit is equal to 0.555. That is 55%. So the right answer is option B, 55%. Question number 73. If a rectangular beam of cross section 300 mm by 400 mm is subjected to shear force of 50 kN, then the maximum shear stress of the section is. The maximum shear stress for a rectangular cross section is 3 by 2 times of average shear stress, where average shear stress is ratio of shear force divided by area of the rectangular cross section. So 3 by 2 times of shear force is 50 kN divided by area of the rectangle cross section is 300 by 400. On solving this, the maximum shear stress will be 0.625 Newton per mm square. Option A is the right answer. Question number 74. If dry density of the sand with a porosity 0.387 is 1600 kg per meter cube, then the void ratio is void ratio is defined as the ratio of porosity divided by 1 minus porosity so porosity is given as 0 0.387 so 1 minus 0 0.387 the value of the void ratio will be 0 0.631 option c is the right answer question number 75 a retaining wall retains a sand strata with angle of internal friction 30 degree up to its top if a uniform surcharge of 12000 newton per meter square is put on the strata then the increasing lateral earth pressure intensity on the wall will be Lateral earth pressure intensity is given by formula coefficient of active earth pressure multiplied by intensity of the surcharge. Coefficient of active earth pressure is calculated by the formula 1 minus sin phi divided by 1 plus sin phi. Intensity of surcharge is 12,000 Newton per meter square, 4,000 Newton per meter square. Option C is the right answer. So this completes the part 2 questions of this question paper. I hope all the information and detailed solution provided for this question paper is satisfied for your examination preparation. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you all.